talk finally about Distel, which is the manufacturer of this uh, clip drift bottle here. So that's a local brand you'll be familiar with. But of course, it's got a whole lot of other things going on, like Amarula and a whole lot of other brands that we can get into in a moment. Whiskies, they bought their way into the Scotch market as well. Strong business locally, a little bit illiquid in the sense of the shares, but we'll talk about that. 30.29 <coughs> billion rands worth of market capitalization. Price to earnings ratio of 20, dividend yield 2.78. It's hard to buy, that's the problem. Yeah. It's too tightly controlled by the uh, controlling shareholder, which is effectively Remgro. That's mm. right. And of course, uh, AB InBev sold their stake uh, recently. Right. To, I think it wasn't, it wasn't the PIC. The PIC, yeah. exactly. So, you know, you've got Firm something like as well. close on 90% mm. tied up in, in two or three entities, mm. which does make it very difficult to, to trade this thing, mm. which is a great pity because, as I said right at the beginning, it's a great unsung hero of the, the, the liquor market here. It's a wonderful company. It's, it's really good and solid. And you mm. can get, strangely enough, you can get a lot, lot of their products all around the world as well. Amarula yes. Cream. Yes. I've seen it in places like Iceland, for example. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, so you know, it's, it's, it, they've done a tremendous marketing exercise. You mentioned Buna Arvin, for example, buying into the, the Scotch whiskey market there. Yep. Done exceptionally well in that so part as well. So that's stuff that's I made like. there for yeah. that market, and they're going to go global with yeah. it. Okay, and then other things like Pongratz, which of course is uh, champagne or Cape sparkling, whatever they call it. Some mass market products like Grassa and Hunters, you know, the cider. The Alco Pops, yep. Okay. So let's look at the share chart. Now that one looks a little bit chunky and that's because as we've indicated before, it's not the greatest trader. So those spikes up there on the left are indicative of moments when people have just thought, hell, I want to own this company and I don't care what I have to pay. So they would be wafting in. I guess the slide on the right though is indicative of maybe just some earnings related concerns, people worrying a little bit about the company's ability in the current somewhat depressed economic environment. But yeah. Looks more like a buying opportunity. I, to I'd me. say it's a buying opportunity, but mm. I think the people there are neglecting the fact that this does have, um, if, if not global aspirations, certainly international aspirations, yeah. and they've done remarkably well outside of South Africa. And of and course, the weak a twenty will help them. price to earnings ratio isn't actually all that um, high yeah. by its historic standards. Exactly. So we're going to go hot on this one. Although we would say that if you're planning to buy some for your portfolio, be calm, patient, go bid at a level that looks appropriate, and just bide your time. See yes. if there's somebody who uh, is retiring their whole portfolio and has an opportunity to buy.